Hey, hey, welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Baller Show. If you're new here, my name is V. Lee. This is the show about real estate investing, knowledge, experience, and real life lesson. The purpose is to help you to reach your financial freedom in real estate investing faster. So today, I have the honor to interview a very special guest and talking about talent and vision. This guest is the largest landowner of the Galveston County, Texas, and he and his team has purchased and redeveloped over 1 million square feet of real estate in the past five years alone. So stay tuned. Mr. Karam, so great to have you on the show. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for the invite. I'm honored to be here. The honor is all mine, sir. Well, so I read a lot of articles about you, but maybe some of the audience don't know who you are just yet. Would you mind to give them a quick introduction? Yes, ma'am. I'd be happy to. So my name is Jerome Mansour Karam. I'm from a little town in Louisiana, Oakdale, Louisiana. And I uh, come from a large Lebanese Catholic family. A lot of cousins, a lot of large family, a lot of gatherings. I uh, went to LSU, like all good Louisiana guys do, right? And then I, uh, I went to law school here in Houston and uh, got married into my second year of law school. Actually, my first year, finishing up my first year, to my beautiful wife from El Paso, Leslie Shock with Karam. Uh, now she's a Karam, of course. And we've been married for 35 years. And uh, we have five beautiful children. So that's a little bit about our background. Well, thank you for sharing that. So you were an attorney. How did you get involved in real estate, sir? So I'm still an attorney. I'm very interested in the law. I'm very grateful that we've been able to help a lot of people. In my younger days, we used to do a lot of personal injury cases. I probably handled over a thousand personal injury cases from the beginning to the end. Probably about 10 years into my practice, into the uh, early 2000s that I started following my true love and passion, and that's purchasing real estate. So I began by buying a couple of houses and uh, doing fixer-uppers, I guess, and then uh, selling them and kept a couple of them as rental. And uh, I've been doing it real, probably real steady since early 2002, 2003. It's my, uh, it's probably a more natural, I'm better at it because of my attention span and because I love the numbers, I love the Everybody's happy in real estate. It's not like that in litigation. So I really enjoy the, I enjoy the practice of what we do, the real estate development. And, uh, but I still take on large personal injury cases. We're still very successful. And uh, my oldest son, Jacob, in Sugar Land, he does exclusively personal injury. So it's real fun for us to work together on these cases. Well, I kept saying I'll take the LSAT one day. I ca- I came to America when when I was 15 and so I was I felt like my English wasn't good enough for me to go to law school so I never pursued that dream but here I, I am in real estate great. and loving it. Yeah, it's fun. I tell you what, real estate gets in your blood and uh it really it's infectious. I mean, people just love it and it's fun to discuss it and to see what you can do with it and what could be and so I'm excited about real estate as well just as you are. The degree of law I always, I always told all my kids that I don't care if you practice law or not. I still want you to get that degree because I feel like it's really a very, very valuable degree no matter what you do. So that's why I pushed it on my kids. I totally agree with you. I'm going to send my daughter over so you can push it on her too, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay, so you started out with some single family investment properties. How did you evolve from that into the massive projects that you are working on now? So it's been a long journey, 20 something years, but we started on the single family houses. And then I actually went to Florida one day, one weekend, and I noticed that people were buying apartment complexes and they were converting them to condominiums that they weren't originally purchased as condominiums or developed as condominiums. And so what happened was, is that I came back to Houston and I said, I'm going to buy a couple of apartment complexes that I feel like they could pass the mustard and be considered a condominium. And so we did that. We did that here in Friendswood, where I live and where my law office is. 
very, very successful, bought apartments for ten or 11,000 a piece and sold them for 45,000 a piece, probably within a matter of months, you know, because people obviously would love to purchase a home opposed to being a renter. So that's sort of how it started. And uh, from there, we just grew and we grew from probably 18 apartments which are still existing today. I named them after my wife, Leslie, to where we, uh, at one time, we owned over a thousand condominiums in Houston. And I was actually at a very young age, the largest uh, condominium owner in the city of Houston. And what are some of the projects that you're involved with today? So from there, it evolved from owning apartments to converting them into condominiums to owner financing them and then to selling the mortgages to then I was introduced to these big, large buildings, the Albertsons. And from there, I, uh, when Albertsons came to Houston uh, and, and got sent home by HEB in a very quick manner, if you remember those days, yeah. they left these amazing structures, 55,000, whatever, 253 feet, I think, were the amount. Uh, we actually bought those. So my wife, Leslie, and I bought those three Albertsons, one in Sugarland, one in Atascocita, and one in uh, Jones Road. And we converted them into uh, nice plazas. And it's like I always tell everyone, when you purchase these large buildings, you think about it. They already have the uh, street access. They already have the, the buildings, you know, the envelope. They already have the roof in place. All, they already have the flooring in place. They already have plumbing. And so none of those are small feats. Those are all very... Uh, significant feats that mm -hmm. if you can purchase an old building and figure out how to retrofit it, that it, it really makes a lot of sense. So that's the key. Figure it out how to retrofit it. So what did you do? Did you like sleep there, dream about it? <laughs> no, what happened was, it's an interesting story, is that I um, the first one I purchased was in Friendswood and it was an old HEB and it was an old, it was an old HEB and I bought it because it was at a hard corner in the town that I lived in, in Friendswood. And a, 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 a gentleman called me up and said, hey, I want to I want to rent just your back space. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, to do what? And he said, I want to train kids how to get stronger, faster, quicker, and get them ready for uh, be a better athlete. And that was really a call that changed my life. And it wound up being from a gentleman. I said, well, how do you have experience? He goes, well, my name's Steve McKinney. And he said, and I, and right when he said, and I, I interrupted him. I said, you play for the Houston Texans. We just signed you. You're the All-American center from Texas A&M. And he goes, yep, that's right. So Steve and I forged a great relationship, and he agreed to take all the back space. We would keep the front 100 for retail, but the back on these buildings are sometimes 200, 250, 300 feet depth. Well, Steve and I had a deal that he would always take the back. I would put up the money to do the build out and then he would rent it. Well, any buffoon can rent the front corner, the front hundred uh, of these amazing buildings because they always had the best corners. And so that was, so once that became around available, then it became easy for me. And that's when we sort of began. The other thing that was uh, real valuable is that we realized that we couldn't always depend on on Velocity Sports Performance, which was Steve's uh, franchise. And so we put in, we started figuring out what some alternative uses for the back of the building. Mm -hmm. And we went with storage and we went with these spas that have 20, 30, 50, 70 rooms that are built out mm -hmm. uh, for independent contractors, independent hairstylists, esthetician, whatever. Yeah. And so we came up with some really good ideas on what would occupy the back space so you'd have a corridor from the front that would access the back and then in the back it would go from one end to the other and take the entire depth the remaining depth so we became successful doing those and uh that sort of gave us our experience so the space would have been just sitting vacant otherwise every time uh, that's the only thing we buy are, vac are vacant buildings so it's all we ever purchase are vacant buildings we never ever ever buy an ongoing 85, 90% building that's already occupied. So all the Albertsons, the HEB, the Ace Hardware, the Kmarts, mm -hmm. 
the mall of the mainland maybe had one or two tenants out of 800,000 square feet. And uh, now the shopping center that I purchased across the street, that one was like 25 or 30% occupied. And so the last 12 months we bought it and now we've just announced that we, we filled it up. So you're the first media, if you will, that we can announce that we just signed our last tenant. So we're, we're hundred percent occupied at mainland crossing in uh, Texas city, which was 135,000 square feet. And when we bought it 13 months ago, it only had 35,000. So we're real proud to be able to tell you that we just leased our last tenant. Well, that's awesome. Congratulations, sir. Yes, ma'am. Well, let's go back to this Albertson space here. So when you bought it, it was vacant and the back space would have just been vacant if you didn't have Steve, the football player to come in. Yes. Yeah, so we bought an Albertsons. Remember, it's probably uh, 55,000 square feet. So it probably had like probably 600 feet wide and maybe and maybe 800 feet deep. And so uh, anyway, it came out to 55,000 square feet. And so I don't remember the exact dimensions, but Steve yeah. or Velocity Performance, Sports Performance would take the back of the square footage. And then one time we put a large spa there. We just realized that, that that's how it worked. And then we filled up the front with Double Dave's Pizza, uh, UTNB, uh, insurance offices, other restaurants. And so that's how we evolved. And that was in the early 2000, uh, probably four, five, six, seven, eight years. And then from there, we evolved into where we started buying other properties, one property at a time at Kmart, et cetera, or Walmart, and we would start redeveloping it. And then about seven years ago, I was in Texas City, and we purchased, we were driving by the mall of the mainland, and there was a Macy's that was available. And really, I'd have to say, that's what really catapulted JMK5, is that we purchased this one building, a Macy's, in a closed-down mall, Mm -hmm. And then from there, things started happening. But then we bought the next building, the J.C. Penney building. Then we bought the remainder of the mall, which was 800,000 square feet. And uh, the first two buildings, I didn't have a partner. I took my wife's cousin as my partner on the remaining piece. And then I eventually bought him out. And then we've been working months and years and tens of millions of dollars to renovate it. And we finally are at the end. Everything will be complete this year in the next 40 days. So it's been a long journey. So when you started with Macy, did you ever think that you were going to buy the whole? No, uh, you couldn't even think like that. I mean, who could even think? No. I mean, remember, I was just, no. So what were you, what were you thinking when you purchased Macy? Did you, you know, what, what was your vision then? So it was 150,000 square feet I got with my son. Jake up and asked him, hey, let's Google a, a gym that we can put in the upstairs to fill up some of this square footage. Mm -hmm. We Googled and we found World's Gym. Once we put the World's Gym up there, upstairs in the very back, well, then that's when everybody started coming to us. And that's when we started realizing we've got something here. Mm -hmm. So then the J.C. Penney, about 150 yards away from us, became available and we purchased that and held on to it for a couple of years until finally we came up with the idea of storage, indoor climate control storage. From there, I started thinking like this, this could work. We're on to something. Mm -hmm. So we realized at an early age that if it was up to be, it was up to us putting up the money, doing the construction, coming up with the intended uses of mm -hmm. whatever it's going to be. And so if we were going to wait on people, it would have never happened. So we had to open up our own world's gym and we had to open up our own storage. And so when we purchased the rest of the mall, we sold one building, the Dillard's. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we kept the rest of it and we started just filling it up. And it's been a journey. Like I said, we own the largest uh, entertainment center in the state of Texas. It's three football fields with go-karts and video games and trampolines. And we started this restaurant row. Uh, we have executive suites. Cinemark had been there for 30 years and could not, it would not agree to let me put in brand new comfortable chairs and one to sort of keep their thumb on us. And uh, so we wouldn't renew the lease with them in December. And we're hoping to be open by the end of this month, end of next month. And we'll, it'll be very, uh, it'll be an upscale dine and uh, 
theater type. And so that's what we do. That's really our, that's one of our secrets. We have about 10 of them, but that's one of them is that we're not scared to put in our own money. We're not scared to put in our own work product and we're not scared to run the business ourselves with the idea that ultimately we're going to turn it over to a management company or we're going to sell it to a third party Mm -hmm. or we're going to lease it to a third party and to just stay as the landlord. That's what distinguishes us. That's one of the things that distinguishes us from all the other boutique real estate firms because they'll buy the land and then they don't want to touch it afterwards and they'll sell it. or they'll buy the land and then they'll develop it, but then they won't dare put in one of their own stores or one of their own entertainment centers or, or businesses, if you will. They won't put any of that. That's what distinguishes us from everyone else is that we're like, hey, we want to buy it at the right price. We want to develop it at the right price. We want to renovate it at the right price and we'll run it ourselves. And we'll, you know, we'll come up with our own, our own commerce, our own business plan. So how do you know what to fill the space with? So we look at a void in the market. I mean, obviously, I don't want to put in a new gym next to another successful gym or a new Chinese or Italian restaurant next to the next one. So we sort of look at what's a void in the community. And then we try to come up with very impactful, large, relevant businesses and commerces. To some people, they probably view it as being very risky and gutsy. I, it's, I it's, think it takes a lot of courage to do what you do. Yeah, there, well, there's there's no doubt it does. It takes a lot of, you know, and but you have to understand that uh, my son Joshua has joined our team. He's very, very smart. He's a lawyer and he's an MBA, about 30 years old. He's been with us for two or three years. My daughter Joanne has joined our team and uh, she's about 26, 27 years old. And uh, we've got an amazing staff. Uh, we have a corporate team that stays in Friendswood at our law office. We have uh, Miss Daniela Williams, and we have uh, Laura Bird and uh, Allie Rivers, and probably have about four or five ladies here. And then we have a large team of uh, the workforce that are at the uh, Mall of the Mainland, formerly known as the Mall of the Mainland. We don't own a closed-down mall. We own Mainland City Center. It's a new retrofit mm -hmm. city center. And we have a large team around us. Sharon Abersia has really been uh, amazing. She does our marketing for us. We have Ashley Cole, which is in charge of our development. We have uh, Blakely. It just works. We have people that are like-minded and but that think outside the box. And they understand that we cannot be penny smart and pound stupid. So that's what distinguishes us is that we're not scared to spend the money. We'll spend $5 million, $10 million on a deal that other people, it would take them three years. And it would take them years of counseling, of going to a psychiatrist because it would keep them up at night. Well, we'll make a decision in three minutes and be like, we'll buy, we'll do it, let's go. And then we figure out where we get the money later and <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's worked for us. It really has. What do you think the major contributor to your success? You know, I mean, everyone can go out and want to be an investor and want to do it big. But what is, what is it about you? How can you see those things that other people didn't see? We have a great team about us. Like I mentioned, Bill Tudor, our amazing architect. Self Thin, our engineer. Rookshan, our other engineer. Dahlia, who does our MEPs. So we, we have a great team, Kathy and uh, Larnette, who does our distribution. And so I want to give them credit, of course. I want to give my wife, Leslie, credit because if she didn't want me to do this, she could make it, you know what I mean? But she's always been very, very supportive of me, and she believes she believes in me. She knows I'm not going to put us in a bad financial position. And uh, we're not risk adverse. You know, and I didn't even know that was a word until my younger son, Joshua, comes to the office and starts the MBA. explaining. <laughs> What's that? The MBA. I said, the MBA? <laughs> and then it's like, Dad, people don't do what you do. And it's almost better that ignorance is bliss because I didn't think it was a big deal. But so many people are starting to come out of the woodworks and tell us, like, what is making y'all do all these deals? In the last year, we bought a marina. I've never owned a marina in my life. We bought a marina. It took me three minutes to look at the deal, and then we agreed upon the price. Mm -hmm. Marina del Sol in Lake City. We bought we bought the property across the street from the mall. That was one hundred and thirty five thousand. We bought a five hundred boat marina in, in Lake City. We bought probably the largest 
the largest purchase that we've made that everyone is, people stop us on the road and it's just, it's like almost a universal international language is music. And so we bought the dog track after it was under contract for 15 months, 15 months, a very successful real estate firm had it under contract, 15 months and they didn't close. And the mayor calls me up and after looking at it in less than 10 minutes, I said, we're going to buy this. And we called up the owner, the previous uh, real estate firm decided to pass. And we called up the owner, Paul Bear Bryant, the famous football coach, his son still owned the, the property. We made a deal and 28 days later, we bought a 90 acre track with close to 350,000 square feet that nobody knew what to do with. And we decided we were going to put the most premier music arena in the state of Texas that's individually owned. And uh, we've already started on it. We've already started selling the one third of the land Mm -hmm. to uh, other investors that are going to have their own retail and and Mm -hmm. apartments and commercial. And the back two thirds we're going to keep for our own development. And uh, it's going to be one of a kind. And the reason why I can tell you it's going to be one of a kind is that Live Nation and OBG, the two heavyweights, the two you know most relevant music management companies, the ones that own hundreds and hundreds of arenas and manage mm-hmm. them across the United States and control all the all the music talent, you know all the biggest names. They've told us there's nothing like this in the United States. We've redesigned it amazingly. Uh, Mary Denise Mowad from uh, Oakdale, Louisiana. I'm proud to say uh, she's a designer. Uh, with a great firm in uh, New Orleans, and uh, and uh, she's come up with an amazing design. So we're really excited. It's going to look like Las Vegas. It's going to look like Las Vegas. People are going to go there just to be a part, just to see this arena, and not just be driven there because of who the talent is. But they're going to go there just to go get a steak dinner or drinks, or because it's going to it's going to look like Las Vegas. We're doing a total retrofit of the outside and the inside. Everything's going to be indoors. So it's going to be amazing. That sounds really exciting. So you bought this old abandoned dock dock track. Was it abandoned? Hey, if you enjoy this episode, please drop a comment below. 100% it was abandoned. Along with the mall across the street. I just bought the mall five years earlier. Everybody (laughs) told me I was crazy. So if enough people tell me I'm crazy, I'm stupid, it can't be done, it's impossible, I know I'm about to be more successful. So I really like when people tell me I can't get it done. If people start patting me on the back, I don't want all that. I want them to tell me I'm crazy and it can't be done. Nobody can do it. That's when I know we're going to get it done. So this music arena that you're converting the dock track to, do you plan to open it all the time or only when there's concerts and events? Great question. So we're going to turn it over to one of the large music management companies like an OVG Live Nation Mm -hmm. type. Mm -hmm. But not only are we going to try to host 25, maybe 30 concerts a year with big names, we are adding 60,000 square feet to it. So everything will be indoors and air conditioned. So it'll be close to 400,000 square feet and we'll have next door to it 18 VIP bungalows. And so uh, we're so excited about it. It's going to be, uh, it'll hold 12,500 people all indoors, all state of the art food equipment, commercial equipment, and uh, big, comfortable chairs. It's going to be like nothing. It's not like, it's going to be like nothing you've ever seen. It's going to be like Las Vegas on steroids because when you go to their nice arenas, they hold 1,500 or 2,000. They don't hold 12,000. But we're getting a lot of our ideas and our vision from Las Vegas, having the chandeliers and having the beautiful lights and the amazing walkways and the, and the vignettes with the special colors. And we're going to be open. We're going to be open by March of next year. So how many trips to Vegas did you have to make doing this research? I, very good. So my wife and I took one and uh, we wore our very comfortable shoes because we walked every arena and we took all kind of pictures. Uh, but more importantly, we sent our designer, Mary Denise yeah. uh, Mowat from Oakdale. And she uh, she's taken a couple of trips and she's gotten a tro- total vision. We've approved everything and and we've started. We're already permitted. We're already funded by this amazing firm in Houston that's a hard money lender. And I don't know if you've ever heard of them not. They're called Jet Lending. No, and, uh, nobody knows who they are. Yeah, you've never heard of Jet Lending, Mr. Eddie Gantz, <laughs> Mr. Johnny Hayes. 
I think they're one of the biggest in town. So you, you can't be doing in real estate in Houston and have not heard of Jet, right? That's right. And they've helped me tremendously. And uh, they've been a great company and they've been a great alliance for us. And uh, they trust us because they're the ones who advanced the money on the mall across the street. And so we paid them off. After we finished building it out, banks came in and lent us the money and paid us off, paid them off. So we said, look, we want to do the same thing. And they, they were with us and they support us and believe in us. So I'm going to switch the subject here. Can you tell us about the name behind your, uh, in your background there, JMK5? What does that stand for? So that's my name, Jerome. Then my initials, Jerome, Mansour, Karim. That's my full name. And then the five represents our five kids and their initials. So we have Jacob Mansour, who was an All-American quarterback at Friendswood and got scholarships all over the country, played at Texas Tech, Memphis, and uh, has now become a successful lawyer in uh, Sugar Land. And then Joshua Michael went to LSU undergrad. They all went to Friendswood. Joshua Michael's 30, and they went to LSU undergrad and then SMU Law School and MBA. And he's really our CFO, and he's just an amazing young man. We wouldn't have been able to grow this fast without him. And then Joanne Marilyn just got married, but she went to LSU and U of H Law School and U of H MBA, and she's joined our firm. And she just joined a wonderful young man, Danny Avila, who's a lawyer with Reed Smith. And then uh, Jordan Marie uh, is my artsy little girl, and uh, she was out of my five kids. She was the most artsy, and so she didn't want to go to law school. She graduated and fashion design and art and just amazing. She redecorates beautiful for us. And, but she married a fine young man who was a, a, a all American pitcher at LSU. And who's also a successful lawyer here in Houston, Chris Matulis. And then my last son, Justin, who's a piano prodigy who plays at great hotels and bars around town. He's in his first year of law school at Thurgood Marshall, where I actually been. Well, tell me not to mess with your family. All right. <laughs> I said, remind me not to mess with your family. We got all our attorneys here. <laughs> we got a lot of them. I'll tell you what, we uh, but they're all great kids and we're so proud. My wife, Leslie, and I are very proud of them. So do share your secret. How do you raise such fine children? Thank you. So uh, my wife and I, we agreed when we first got married that that would be our primary focus, that we would keep them steeped in our Catholic faith, in our Maronite Catholic faith, of course. And our, and our heritage. And so my wife, I give her the credit, you know, because she's such an amazing lady that's real steeped in her faith and prayer. And, you know, she had tenants that she wouldn't, you know, she insisted they play the piano. She insisted that they learn their catechism very well. And she insisted that they uh, become music oriented. And so she did. I was big into sports. So I want, I pushed the kids towards sports. So there was always a, a compromise there, but no, we've been, that's really where we've that's really where we've excelled or our kids. That's what people really come up to us about are like these kids of yours. And so we've been really blessed, thank God. Yeah, I was at a luncheon and you were speaking and I was so impressed by your whole family. Thank you. Your how you are all to each other and how respectful your children are to you. And and that carry a lot. I I was very impressed. Thank you. That's where I got to meet you, right? At that C R E N. Yes, the, the crane launch. Yep. Yeah, great group. Great. So, group. when should we expect the uh, music arena to open so I can go to a concert? So, uh, we're hoping it's going to be open somewhere in the months between February and March. We're on foot. We're on great schedule there, and uh, we're going to do our best to meet it. Uh, we're also going to have festivals that is going to that are going to be amazing because remember we sit, we're going to sit on about sixty acres. Mm -hmm. And we have plenty of parking and we're going to have the entire indoor arena that'll hold 12,000 people. So we have an advantage over anyone else that we're going to be able to have special events such as Circus Soleil and like Disney on ice and things as such, even wrestling. We're good friends, of course, with Booker T, the famous wrestler. And uh, he's already told us that he's going to host some of his wrestling events over there that he manages. So I hope we understand comparison to some of the arena we have around here. We have Toyota Center. Right. So if you think about the Toyota Center, it's got a large floor on the bottom 
Mm-hmm. You got all the chairs that are 16 inches wide, 18 inches yeah. wide. You got to go up those uncomfortable stairs. Yeah. So it doesn't have the Las Vegas feel, nor should it. It's a basketball gym, right? So at JMK5, we strive for the wow factor. And so that's what we're going to give them is the wow factor. We're going to have comfortable seats. We're going to have vignettes that are amazing, that are like little bar areas. We're going to have specialty drinks. We're going to have newly added on an orchestra that'll be air conditioned. There won't be a bad seat in the house, unlike the Toyota Center. I mean, you can have those nickel bleachers way up there mm-hmm. trying to look down on the basketball game yeah. or whatever. And so that won't be like similar to us. Well, I'll tell you, we were at a guard book concert a few months, a few weeks ago, and the way in line to get food or drink was horrendous. So I was thinking about you. I said, whatever you build, I hope you don't have lines. <laughs> no, well, we're going to have lines, but it's not going to be outrageous because we're going to have four different large areas of uh, food and four, four different large uh, concession areas. We're going to have top of the line equipment and concessionaires and uh, It's going to be really special. And again, it's not going to hold 80,000 people, but yeah. it's not going to be like one of these small ones that are 2,000, 3,000. I mean, it's going to be quite enough where you're going to feel like a special experience, but it's not going to be so small where you feel like, you know, you're in your backyard. So it's it's going to be really neat. We think we found the right mix and uh, well thought out of. We've got great architects, like I said, uh, so we're really excited about it. All right. So... You've done so many amazing projects. What's next for you? You running for mayor? No, I'm not doing anything <laughs> politics. We're going to do the uh, we're going to do the arena. We're looking at another couple of projects that are uh, we're about to start construction on on uh, 39 homes in Galveston on the water. Also, 30 homes uh, Marina del Sol. We're going to uh, hopefully get permission from the city and tear down the dry stacks and build 30 beautiful waterfront. Uh, townhomes right there in uh, Marina del Sol uh, Cove. It's gonna, they're going to be amazing because you got three to five million dollar houses on one side and million dollar townhomes in the other. And so the dry stacks don't shouldn't even be there. So we're going to tear down the dry stacks and we're going to mm-hmm. we're going to build some beautiful townhomes that'll be under a million dollars, probably six fifty to eight hundred thousand. And then we're going to build some beautiful homes in Galveston. Will be the closest new development. Uh, to downtown. We'll be off a of seven mile road. So uh, we're really excited about that. We really have a lot of houses. We have many houses that we're going to start. We're going to start our house. Uh, we've never been this loaded up with this many lots. And so uh, next year is going to be filled with a lot of, with many lots and with us completing all the construction at the mall of the mainland, at the mainland and at the arena. And I forgot, of course, we own two amazing hotels in Galveston we haven't spoke about. We bought the Falstaff Brewery, probably my toughest project. It was completely shut down for 35 years when we purchased it. And uh, we're, we're, uh, we're going to build a boutique hotel that we're about a year away from. It'll be a Wyndham boutique hotel. And then on the other side of the island, we purchased the Commodore which mm-hmm. is a well-known, iconic hotel right there on oh, the Strand. Oh, right, you bought that, by the way. It's because everyone tells me that. It's got a, a multi-billion dollar view, but it had been run down. Yeah. And so we're in, the, uh, we're in the middle of renovating it, and hopefully it'll be finished by February, March of next year as well. Well, that is amazing. So as we wrapping up here, what is an impactful moment or a turning point in your life journey? I've had many. I've had many, honestly, I have. But I'd have to say us buying the mall is where it really started turning. That, that's that been probably my most impactful because once that happened and people, I don't think I even realized, what do they say, ignorance is bliss? I don't think I realized what a large task that was. And when we bought that, it's when everything started coming to us that we, we were taken much more serious and people and people started bringing us the very difficult task and the difficult buildings that needed to be renovated or repurposed. And so that was probably it is that we, uh, when we purchased, when we purchased our first building at the mall, I think it really opened up the gates, if you will. And then people started bringing us, what about this building? This building has been shut down. This one needs a lot of renovation. So I think that was really the beginning of it. Awesome. This is the question I ask every guest on the show. How does the audience get in touch with you? So we're actually, 
we're a lot easier. We're a lot more accessible than people in my position usually are, to tell you the truth. I like to take my own phone calls. I like to learn about people. I'm, all, I'm still interested in hearing from our guest. I'm interested in hearing from the, uh, if you will, the average Joe, because they have the best ideas. And I like to hear their story as well. And uh, that's really the people that I hang around with. So I'm not one of these types that you have to go through 20 layers. So I'm easy to reach at the law office of Jerome Karam in Friendswood. My email is easy to find, Jerome at jmk5holdings.com. And uh, no, we take our own phone calls. We answer our email. We have a great staff that answers my emails, but we're easy to reach. And, uh, you know, I mean, I can't spend all day visiting. I, I mean, once a week, twice a week, I have people ask me, can I just intern with you? And, you know, and I would love that. I went to Thurgood Marshall and, and they've named the moot courtroom after me. And we try to go back there and try to help these young kids and, that's something I'm real passionate about, but we try to spend an appropriate amount of time reaching back and helping younger people, you know, younger students, how to get started, etc. Thank you so much for watching the Real Estate Ballers Show. If you enjoy the show, do hit that like and subscribe button, please. Also help us with YouTube algorithm by leaving a comment. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.